We're really excited to be working with Free Trade, who've sponsored this video. Free Trade believes in commission free investing for everyone. This means you won't pay any commission when investing your spare cash. While other brokers charge up to £12 per trade, Free Trade doesn't, so you can keep more of your money. And where they do charge, like on FX, it's fair and transparent. The design of the app makes it simple and easy to use, which is great for any experience level. From beginners starting to educate themselves on the benefits of investing to experts already in the know. You can start investing from just two pounds and they offer these things called fractional stocks. This basically means you can buy a small piece of expensive US companies like Google, Tesla and Apple. With over 700,000 investors on board and having won the best online trading platform at the British Bank Awards five years running, they're an investment platform you can trust. Now for the best bit, if you create and fund your account with just 50 pounds using our link, you will get a free share worth between 10 and 100 pounds. That could be in anything from Ford to Spotify. Remember, when you invest, your capital is at risk. The value of your portfolio can go up as well as down and you may get back less than you put in. This is not financial advice. You should always do your own research on what investments are right for you before investing or seek the advice of a professional. Yo guys, welcome to the last lap. Don't forget to drop a lovely juicy five-star rating if you're watching an Apple podcast or Spotify. Hope you enjoy and let's get into it. I had a dream about Le Cusatifi last night, which sounds worse than it was meant to, but uh, yeah. Was, oh, yeah, so yeah. what was, because you were saying so early, you've... You've looked into Nicholas. Yeah, I've been trying to organise an interview with Nick. Nick, like we're on first name terms, like yeah. nicknames, Nicholas. Mm, um, Nick. Because I kind of want to see what he's up to. Now he's out of F1 and he's been so, like silent on social media and all that kind of stuff. So I went on his website and there's like a media contact information. And I emailed him last night and the email doesn't exist anymore. And I was like, wow, he really has like... Gone off up. grid. He's, on, he's off the grid. grid. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. It's a shame because I really want to have a chance to interview him but just see how he's doing as well yeah yeah, yeah, yeah i know hope, you know check up on him i think about right, him yeah. quite a lot actually i'm like i hope he's all right i mean he's a millionaire's son so he's probably gonna be fine he's probably like in bali he's like got an endless supply yeah he's probably the one like, with the f40 yeah. on a yacht in monaco harbor yeah, this week that's probably yeah. him in disguise <laughs> yeah. as well yeah I, yeah it's, it's funny can you look at his career and obviously he never did you know the, the job in f1 he had his old moments um Silverstone. Yeah. hungry yeah yeah, that's it. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, I think he'll have, uh, you know, he's, he's got the minerals to have a career in sports cars or whatever. Yeah, I think so. But I, I, I think, yeah, that the impact he had on the sport, not just kind of culturally. It's generational. But yeah. he, he, like, honestly, and it would be, I'd, I hope you get that chat mm. because I'd be really interested to hear like a candid chat with Nikki about just because, I mean, there's pressure enough when you're in yeah. F1. But like with all of the, you kind of almost become a bit of a meme because of the crashes and because yeah. of his performances, but then also everything else. And obviously Abu Dhabi 21, of course, is, is, is a huge, you know, part of his legacy for want of a better term. Um, but like it would be, because I, I think there's, there's obviously, I think we're all guilty of forgetting about the humanity of these drivers sometimes. Yeah. And it's like, actually like the, that must have been, like so when I see like I get I might get like dog pod for a dodgy take on Twitter like it's not a nice feeling but just imagine like knowing what went on and then how there was such a reaction to it like yeah yeah I yeah. can't even begin to imagine it. The fact that he said, you know, like he got a bit fearful for his life at some points because of the amount of death threats that he was getting. Like he had to hide security and stuff mm -hmm. because he was so worried that something awful was going to happen to him. I mean, yeah, like that's going to take a massive toll on somebody's mental health. And like you say, on top of the fact that, you know, the car wasn't in the best of states and he was frequently finding himself at the back or crashing or whatever. But yeah, he did have some good results. And I'd like to think that he knows that I the majority of fans were like actually like not jokingly but genuinely happy for him like when he got that top in that practice session in mm. Hungary or whatever like yes people shared about the goatee fee and all these memes and <laughs> stuff like that but um he still he seemed like a really nice sound lad at the end of the day mm. it's just a shame that the results didn't kind of mirror that vibe yeah <laughs> yeah well, that's all because I, I think you know <clears throat> all of these drivers there's such a variety of characters and personalities mm. I think like a lot of people have warmed to like, I'm surprised it's, I feel like now people are starting to warm to him more, but like Esteban yeah. is one of them. Dry. I mean, he obviously got his podium. He was hated for so long. We did like a- Why, did we think, why, why do you think that was? I don't know. But I, when um, one of the places I worked before this is we did a poll on like a questionnaire on who your favorite drivers are to see like for merchandise. And Esteban Ocon had like less than 1% of the vote. 
as that his pe- people said that that was a favorite driver like he literally yeah. was not really liked at all i don't know if it's to do with the brazil max situation or what it was but yeah his uh his likability is rocketed up it's, yeah i wonder why yeah. it's been i feel like it's just been like little i guess teammate incidents as well yeah i uh, guess yeah, he's never really been in a car where it's been like he's always just been sort of like a mid-pack car I feel like it's easier to be sort of anonymous you know I think it's not there. helped I, I like think Billy-wise. you know he's had his run-ins with Fernando mm-hmm. as a teammate he's had his run-ins with Checo yep. two drivers with two very strong big fan bases mm-hmm. and I guess because Esteban hasn't carried that kind of fan base himself to I think the fr- um, I remember watching a, a feature that Sky Sports did about Pierre and Esteban and they were talking about how like I think they were um, is it Arnu and Pross they were kind of drawing comparisons where it's kind of you sat on one side or the other but even in France like Pierre is the driver that has more um, seems to have more support generally right. over there according to according to the journalists anyway it's like it's obviously you've got an interesting dynamic there as teammates who were very clear they grew up together I mean I remember I did a video about Esteban mm-hmm. like a long time ago and I, I went went through the weeds and learned about like he should be like he's the driver who like made it like some so many of these drivers come from such exuberant like privilege and wealth and like his family like literally mm. sold like the, the garage um that his dad used to work as a mechanic and the yeah. home above it to buy like a, a van with their dog to drive around europe going karting like he had like everything to lose mm. and it's like that that's the kind of story that should be be, be celebrated i think more people need to hear it because it's not even a story i do to be honest yeah yeah it's, he had to sacrifice like, his family had to sacrifice yeah. that ever like properly as well yeah i mean you hear about that a lot with like lewis hamilton for example mm-hmm. coming from like rags to riches if you like but yeah esteban exactly the same mm. but it's not really covered as much and it is one of the reasons i find his relationship or friendship should i say not like obviously <laughs> that kind of relationship but with stroll so funny and ironic yeah. mm. it's because obviously strolls come from <clears throat> riches his whole life yeah and yet he's still so close and same with mick as well you know coming from a family where you've got the schumacher name there's got to be a lot yeah. of money going around there and, and they gravitate towards each other but yeah i like esteban a lot and i'm glad that lots of people are sort of waking up and realizing that he is just a quite sweet driver like he got podium today which i'm thrilled about and saying like esty bestie baby (laughs) (laughs) in his uh in his uh, mentions are gonna be yeah we went a bit mad but um yeah no it's i'm glad that that sort of emerged over the last few years Mm. um because yeah he's a race winner whether that'll happen again who knows but just good vibes you know yeah he seems a sweet lad good vibes tall man as well yeah very tall tall man Mm. I'd like to see you go back to back with him as your tall man as well. I mean, in a Formula One guy, I actually don't think I fit underneath that. No, anyway. you know what I want to see? You know that video you did with Lando with the whole like training mm. like Oh, yeah, like, training like but him. Yeah, yeah. Doing it with Esteban. Because I want to see you both doing the neck thing. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, side by side. His neck. It would just be just wham. Yeah, yeah, crazy. <laughs> Surface area. He's like the Peter Crouch of F1. Yeah, I love he it. Is, he is. He's great. Yeah. <laughs> 